LeBron's career and giving it to Giannis Antetokounmpo. We're kicking things off in 2003 where Giannis was drafted by Cleveland. As a rookie, he was underdeveloped and not as dominant as LeBron was. Offensively, he struggled to score and his slim frame made things difficult defensively. It would be a failed first season for Giannis, but along the way, there was glimpses of the dominance that would come. In year two, Giannis was the improvements to all of his averages with a more established skill set, although he'd still have a long way to go before he was at a star level. His athleticism was apparent though, and that carried his game, but not the Cavs as they would miss the playoffs again. And Giannis and the Cavs just barely missed the playoffs. There was a four-way tie for the seventh seed. Giannis was finally ready to flip the script in 2006. He elevated his game and was becoming the face of the franchise that they were hoping for. He earned his first All-Star appearance and cracked 20 points per night for the first time. His strong play was enough to land Cleveland the third seed and a trip to the NBA playoffs. And thank God he finally got to the playoffs because now he can start the actual challenge of this video, which is going to be winning more rings in LeBron's career than LeBron was able to do himself. He'd be facing an aging Detroit Pistons lineup here in round one. Unfortunately for Giannis, his best teammate Hughes was injured. The Pistons were finding cracks in the Cavaliers' defense. Rip Hamilton was abusing screens and scorching the Cavs. And an all-star Chauncey Billups looked like he was in a shoot-around all by himself. And in the blink of an eye, Cleveland had lost home court advantage. All their problems would amplify on the road as Detroit found comfort in their home crowd and they go on to sweep the Cavs. By this point, Giannis had a full breakout season. While he wouldn't earn the reward, he was playing at an MVP caliber level. He would become the most feared offensive player in the NBA in what seemed to happen overnight. His size and speed with the ball was something never seen before and he'd be right back in the playoffs for a Pistons rematch. The series versus Detroit would be very different this year. Giannis was a transformed player from what the Pistons faced a year ago. He was not bothered by the interior defense of Detroit and was pounding the paint like a young boy with his date on prom night. Backed by their star, the Cavs would find themselves headed into round two. The seven seed he had just upset the Magic to face Giannis in round two. And while D-Wade had two MVPs under his belt at this point, Giannis would take the assignment to guard him and completely shut him down. That he would face the same nightmare the Pistons did of attempting to get stops in Giannis attacking the paint. Without much luck limiting his drives to the rim that he would end up dropping in five. And this is Giannis' last hurdle to the NBA Finals. I think he has a legitimate chance. Both teams had a solid supporting cast, but Giannis versus Pierce was the main show. Giannis' game plan was clear as he was in the post trying to bully Paul Pierce. He had the height and size advantage over him and he exploited it each trip down the court. On the other hand, Pierce used his deep skill set of crafty moves to get the edge of over Giannis on the offensive side of the ball. Neither of the two were letting up. One after another, they were scoring and challenging their opponent to match it. This may have been the most equally matched duel we had seen up to 2007. Most of these games finished in the final moments, and Game 7 was no exception. And with the game all knotted up late, Paul Pierce found a mismatch in the corner. He would attack this defender off the dribble and sink in a three to get Boston the lead. From there, Cleveland would take a timeout to draw up a play, and it was designed for Giannis Antetokounmpo to get an easy look at the paint with a lob, and it worked. After the Giannis Law play. The Celtics are only up by one now, and the Cavaliers have a chance to get a stop, and they go on the attack. Paul Pierce has it. Giannis is on him this time. No mismatch this time around. Can Giannis shut Paul Pierce down? They get out of the Gary Payton. This is a very old Payton. I'm pretty sure he needs to be in a community assistant living home by this point. Payton, the lay. It's off the board. The Cavaliers have it. Off to the races. Jones is going to go all the way. Oh, please don't shoot this. No, please slow it down. Jones, no. Pierce again had an opportunity with a mismatch on him and would attack in the post, but this time found no success, and Cleveland had a chance to take the lead. The Cavaliers have another chance here. Only down by one. 20 seconds remaining in this game. Giannis down low in the post. Tony out on him. Oh, don't shoot that, Giannis. Repost him. Oh, my God, no. Giannis the board, though. He's the board to put back. It's in. Giannis takes the lead. With the fate of their season on the line, Walker has it with seven seconds. No way Paul Pierce isn't taking a shot. They're driving in. They must be trying to avoid Giannis on defense. The tough play. It's off. The Cavaliers win. They're headed to the NBA Finals. And in those finals would be the Utah Jazz. But before we watch those finals, we need a meal to eat while we watch. And thanks to Factor, that has never been easier. Their delivery service that offers fresh, never frozen meals delivered directly to your door. Every single meal is chef prepared, and once they arrive at your door, they are ready to eat after just two minutes of heating them up. Factor offers various options like Chef's Choice, my personal favorite, Keto, Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Vegan and Veggie, which makes it super convenient for even the busiest of lifestyles. Once your scrumptious meals arrive, the preparation is super easy. All you have to do is heat it in the oven, or you can do what I do and just toss it in the microwave, hit two minutes, and then it's ready. Ready to eat.
that's good that's really good so if you guys want to check out factor for yourself and i highly recommend that you do head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code allen50 to get 50 percent off your first factor box for me factor is super convenient it takes away the hassle of having to go to the grocery store cook the food and worst of all wash the dishes again that's factor75.com make sure you guys use code allen50 to get that 50 percent off your first box you definitely want to at least give this a try i promise there's no way you're going to be disappointed a huge thanks to factor for sponsoring this video now let's go ahead and get back into checking out those finals they had an old teammate of Giannis with carlos boozer during his stint with utah though he had become an all-star unlike his time in cleveland his post play developed tremendously and it was highly efficient alongside his iso work he also excelled in the pick and roll with co-star darren williams who he had built massive chemistry with williams himself was a very dangerous opponent consensus at the time from the fans would have you thinking he wasn't good but in all honesty, he was highly underrated. His offensive game was impressive, and he was one of the better point guards in the NBA at this point. His game was patient and methodical, but it worked. This wasn't going to be a walk in the park for Giannis by any means. Heading into a game three, he was facing a 2-0 to zero deficit. With his back pinned against the wall, this was when he would deliver the most. He was locked in every possession, eagerly trying to claw his way back into this series until little by little, he got himself back up 3-2 to two with a chance to win in front of his home crowd. And here late in game six of the finals, the Cavaliers are up by 16. That's pretty much going to do it. Giannis is winning his first ring faster than LeBron did and is now one step closer to his goal of surpassing James. The next season, Giannis was back in the playoffs and would ease through the Atlanta Hawks in round one. In round two, he was going head-to-head -head with Chris Bosh, but it would be another one-sided series until there was a rematch with Pierce and the Celtics. This time, though, Pierce had backup from KG and Ray Allen. KG was anchoring the paint for Boston on one end, and on the other, Rondo was setting up his star teammates for open looks. And while Giannis would produce one of the coldest posters ever, he would ultimately be stunned in just four games. Giannis was sidelined for 30 games the next season due to injury, which resulted in walking into the Celtics again in round one as the eighth seed. He'd fight hard in this series and was hopeful after stealing game one in Boston, but inevitably they would fall to Boston again would be the start of Giannis's revenge arc. He took the league by storm in 2010. He looked good before, but now he looked unstoppable. Teams were sending every defensive coverage possible at him, only to be left disappointed as he would counter them with even more unstoppable moves. He showed the league he was the real deal and he was rewarded for it. Yeah, I'm not surprised at all that this man got an MVP. 30, 12, and 7 is just insane. Come playoff time, he was desperate to challenge Boston again and he would beat the Bulls and the Wizards to get there. In this series, the MVP had hands everywhere both offensively and defensively he was ready to end this rivalry once and for all and did just that without boston putting up much fight but now he would have to get past one of the all-time greats kobe was a matchup nightmare and was taking over this series anytime Giannis would get the Cavs a decent run kobe would come back with an even more impressive run of his own the Cavs are trying everything including sending double teams but it just was not working and his mamba mentality was apparent with his foot still in the pedal even when it was already over the lakers are literally up by 30 air right now is kobe still attacking he's still at oh my god yo what was the point the game is over kobe and the lakers would end up completing the sweep which led to Giannis wanting out of cleveland from there he decided to join miami to create a super team playing with the likes of wade and bosh was by far the most talent he ever had with him the chemistry with wade was there right out of the gates and created an electrifying athletic duo chris bosh commanded respect down low with his extensive post game and he was also a solid playmaker out of the painted area to a cutting Giannis. Giannis was loving life here in miami would continue his dominance from Cleveland, but there was just one problem. Their bench was awful, which in the postseason would come to haunt him. They would end up being faced off with a deep Mavs team led by Dirk. The production they got from their role players versus Miami's was just too much, and they would win this series in six games. Really sucks to see this season go to waste because of the bench. Not only did he win most valuable player, but the guy also got defensive player of the year. He had an incredible season. He just couldn't get it done. The following year, they would address their bench weakness in the offseason by adding depth with Shane Battier, and they'd earn the NBA best record behind Giannis's third MVP. And Miami just took a huge hit. Dwayne Wade is out for the rest of the season with a torn MCL. Even with Wade out, Giannis and he got plenty to overcome a weak Philly team in round one. Luck wasn't on their side for round two though. Derrick Rose was healthy in this reality. He was paired with the NBA's top ranked defense. Giannis had no hope from the jump. 
Wade was back in full force the following year and got right back to an all-star level. Miami even added some extra help with Ray Allen. And it's becoming like clockwork now. Giannis has another MVP. The challenge of the bit was for Giannis to get more championships to LeBron, but he's one away from more MVPs as well. The playoffs in the East this year were barely even worth mentioning now that the Heat were healthy. Y'all are not gonna believe this. Chris Paul got to the finals. Who let CP3 get into the finals? Giannis didn't win just one, not two games, wasn't stopping at three, but four games in a row for the sweep and finally a taste of his second championship to get halfway to LeBron. And these final MVP stats cannot be serious. Almost a 39-point triple-double. By 2014, Giannis' star teammates were starting to regress. If he wanted to win another ring this year, he was going to have to take matters into his own hands. He was completely running the show from the defense to taking on the rebounding duties to handling the scoring load for his team. It was yet another successful season for the Greek freak, and he would cap it all off with another MVP to go along with the top seed in the East. Round one of the playoffs was versus an up-and-coming John wall. Giannis and his squad were taking care of business in this series. The veteran leadership of the Big Three created a glaring advantage over the young Wizards. While Washington certainly battled hard, they just didn't have a legitimate chance as Miami would end their season after five. Versus his old team around two, Giannis wasn't holding back and would send them packing after just four games. But come the conference finals, we would be in for a fun matchup versus Paul George and the Pacers. The MVP came into the series on fire, though. He lived for one-on-one -on -one matches like these versus Paul George. Even though Giannis was coming for his neck, George was still collected during the series. Series. He'd find ways to get to his spots, even with the five-time Defensive Player of the Year looming over his every move. He averaged over 30 points per game for the series, but Giannis and Miami were still the clear favorites to win, and they would do just that. Come finals time, though, it's looking like the narrative for this series would be different with Kawhi guarding Giannis. Things are more difficult for him here than they were in the Eastern matchups, and this thing was in a Game 7. Game 7 was being controlled by Tim Duncan early. He oftentimes had a mismatch in the paint and was executing every opportunity, even in his old age. Come halftime, the Spurs had a 15-point lead, and all of the media chalked this one up as over. So it was time to prove the doubters wrong. Giannis let off a barrage of dunks in the second half, and after slowly chipping away at the lead, he gave his team a chance. We are in our first Game 7 in a long while. Miami is up by one versus San Antonio. Giannis has a chance for ring number three already. He would be ahead of LeBron in the ultimate timeline. Giannis, one-on-one -on -one with Tim Duncan, pulls the mid-range. It's off. He gets the board again. He misses his board again. Puts it in. It's like deja vu. Giannis again in the clutch with the rebound after the mid range. Look at Genova on the sideline, pissed. Tony Parker has it. 48 seconds remaining. He's got the ice switch. Wayne Wade, one on one. He's driving it in. Spin move. He creates separation. His leg is good. 40 seconds remaining. Still a lot of time here. I would not be mad about a Ray Allen three. We know he can game him with one of those. They get it to Giannis again. Tim Duncan on him. The pump, nowhere to go. The tough lay. Oh my God. Back up to Parker to pick and roll. Giannis picks him up. The defense is off. Giannis, the board. He gets it the way. Thank God Giannis ain't shooting these throws. I love seeing Miami sub in Shane Betty for defense instead of Ray Allen now. Dwayne Wade, free throw number two to go up by three. He gets it in, and the Spurs use their final timeout. Just shy of seven seconds remaining in this game. They get it to Danny Green in the corner of the pump. Oh no. Tim Duncan, Tony Parker wide open. Oh my God. He gets it in. No. I can't believe they just let Tony Parker tie the game. What are they going to do? Probably force him a terrible three. That's usually what this computer does. Don't tell me it's Mario Chalmers from half court. Oh my God. Mario Chalmers for three. Here in overtime, it's a two point game. Miami has the lead with 16 seconds left to go. San Antonio has a chance to tie this again. Tony Parker did it in regulation. Who's going to be here in overtime? Danny, Danny Green! I don't even know what just happened. Miami has it though. Six seconds left. Mario Chalmers has it. Three seconds. Oh my, what are they doing? Giannis in the clutch. Oh my God. Chalmers does hit both free throws. San Antonio. Using the last time out, you get a stop here, and the series is over. You win a championship. You have to get a stop. They inbound to Tony Parker. Do not let this man tie this thing up again. I couldn't believe my eyes when it happened. Tony Parker to drive. Terrible shot. Terrible shot. They get the board. This one should be over. And just like that, Giannis is officially at three championships. In 2015, Giannis went back to Cleveland after the owner promised an endless supply of his favorite snacks, Oreos. He was now teamed up with superstar Kyrie Irving, and their pick and roll was scary good. Even Giannis as the ball handler for a pick and roll with Kevin Love was just as terrifying for opposing defenses. Love's ability to pop off the screen completely opened up the floor for Giannis. With Irving's high-level talent, Giannis was able to allow his team to perform and 
cannot carry the entire load on his back. The extra reps allow him to excel when needed, and they earned an incredible record. Eventually, he would find himself in the conference finals versus the Bulls. Butler improved tremendously since the last time Giannis faced the Bulls. He was now an all-star, helping out D. Rose and adding Pau Gasol to the mix would make this a true challenge. Giannis was finding trouble scoring in the paint due to the Bulls' great size with Gasol and Noah, and the same size was benefiting Chicago on the other end. Pau Gasol was serious trouble for Kevin Love guarding him down low, and the Cavs would have to act fast. Their answer would be to attack Dunleavy and Rose in a pick and roll. They were harassing the Bulls' weak links in the defense, and once they implemented this strategy, it was all over for Chicago. And believe it or not, this would be the first matchup versus Kevin Durant. Durant was averaging 31 points a night in the playoffs, and that wasn't stopping in the finals. He was aggressive and clearly not phased by the defensive pressure of Giannis, and he'd strip home court advantage away from Giannis after two. Giannis would be heading into OKC for a huge game three. While Giannis struggled to contain KD, Durant was also having difficulty slowing down Giannis's size. He was barreling through the lane like a locomotive, and they would split these two games in OKC as well. The momentum carried into a crucial game five where Giannis exploded for 54 and the win. And the Cavs are running away with it here late in game six. Giannis is winning ring four. And now the Greek freak is all tied up with LeBron and only needs one more ring to have a better career. He would quickly have another chance to do just that after marching through the weak east. But somewhere along the way, Kevin Love would get hurt for the season. This injury to Kevin Love literally cannot come at a worse time. And that's because they were about to face the toughest challenge yet. Both teams were loaded up with star power and going at each other. Right from the start, this series was looking primed to go down in the history books as one of the best ever. Golden State would fire off a run with their elite shooters, and the Cavaliers would follow right behind with a well-rounded attack by their whole team. Every match of this series came down to the final deciding moments. These teams were the epitome of equally matched. Giannis and Curry were both leading effectively with impactful play that wasn't faltering. This one couldn't be any closer between the two as they ended up in a Game 7 down to the wire. This Game 7 is all tied up with a minute 17 seconds remaining. Kyrie ever has the ball. Giannis can win. Ring number five here if they can just overcome and outlast the Golden State Warriors. Kyrie with it. Curry on him. Anderson Varejo out set of the screen. Kyrie offering the lay. That's got to be good. It is. The Warriors on the other end. No threes. You cannot give up a three with a minute to go. Don't let them get the lead. Curry. He's wide open. He's driving around, Kyrie on him. Curry getting into the paint. Oh, Azili on the roll. The Cavaliers have it now. 45 seconds to go, 20 seconds left in the shot clock. Kyrie with it. Just gonna get a screen again. It's looking like Mary just bringing another screen. Same play as last time. Kyrie driving in, he's too fast. He gets it in. Let's find out what Steve Kerr drew up for the Warriors. What are they gonna do here? Down by two, 30 seconds left in the game. Curry has it. I'm not surprised by that just yet. The isolation so far with Kyrie. 12 seconds left. He gets the screen from Azili again. The exact same play again. Curry's too foul. Curry dunks it. We are witnessing history here in this game seven. All knotted up. 17 seconds left. Kyrie has it again. Is it going to be Kyrie's show again? Or is Giannis going to get involved? Is Kyrie going to have to save Giannis' legacy? He's got a history of doing that. 10 seconds left. It's looking like it's all Kyrie versus Curry. He's not even using a screen. Five seconds. Kyrie Boa by him. He's too fast. He gets it in for the lead. No timeouts. So let's take a full grave. This could be over. Curry, full court. Oh, oh, oh shit. Yo, he, he almost fucking made that thing, bro. That was too close for comfort. And Giannis has officially done it. He has passed LeBron. After Giannis proved that he was better, LeBron would take his talent to China with the Guangdong Tigers. Find out how he did there by clicking on this video. 